Hello, welcome to another video. Today I'll be talking about the Bose Acoustic Wave 2 music system. These are the music systems that were designed by Bose on a slightly larger scale um, and they have two speakers as well as a little subwoofer underneath as well. So the sound is produced uh, a lot more in depth I would say and um, the size is quite quite large compared to any other uh, wave system. These are the last ones they made um, seen as the Acoustic Wave Music Systems 2. They do have the Series 1 as well, but in this range they actually bought out two different versions. Um, a lot of people just probably don't even know because they all look exactly the same. So I would say maybe I could say three versions. So you've got the 1, the 2 and the later model of the 2 as well. So this is the 2 and then I've got a later model of the two which is one or the other and they both look identical so you can't say uh, which one's the later model but anyway just going down to the reason why I made this video is because I'm showing the display which is actually the main reason for these older units are now sort of moving away so Bose will we'll service these I believe but the display actually starts to go the clock display over here that will start to sort of fade away and eventually it will die and you'll notice that the radio is working absolutely fine but the radio uh, doesn't display anything on the uh, on the LCD over here now the issue here is that the actual LCD goes so it's not the capacitor, it's not the chip, it's not the resistor, it's not anything else it's actually the LCD display that actually goes for some reason because I've done a lot of research on this and most of the time it's actually the LCD display that actually goes. Now unless somebody knows how to get to those LCD displays and, and replace them in terms of buying another one, uh, it's quite hard to get hold of parts from those. Well actually it's impossible they don't sell any those. So unless you have a donor machine which you can actually sacrifice the parts from, there's no point of even looking at these units because there's, there's no the parts available apart from you know the main ones which are capacitors and some resistors and stuff you can pick them up but um, otherwise there's there's no way so anyway just to uh, move on let me just going to I'm going to open these up and show you from inside um, what's going on so for example over here if we look at this one here let me show you here so how to open this is basically you've got two screws on the side you've got one on the left over here you can see that they are I've already removed the screws from that one and one on the right and also we've got two at the back don't really need to remove the antenna screw so that's leave that there because that's just holding on to the antenna once the four screws are removed you can actually just pull this off and it will just come off like that okay but before we move forward let me show you what you need to do there we are. so in order to move this once the screws are open just lift the back and that would come up. Yep, once that's removed, if you tip it, we can see that there is actually a audio cable for the speakers and a power cable for the circuit. So you just pull them, pull on and pull the other. Right. right, once that's off, this will disengage. So you will have the top bits separate to the bottom. You don't really need the bottom bit at all. I know the power supply is on the bottom bit, but we don't need to touch the power supply because we're only talking about display. So if we're looking at this particular unit here, I believe the display actually is not working on this one. So I will demonstrate that in a minute because I'm going to take the display out and, uh, and show it. But let's go through how to open this up first. So once we're actually at this section here, we need to now open a couple of screws. So we need to open the screws on the edge which are right over here so you're going to open one two three so that's one two three and one over there four only four screws don't need to open any others so once you open the four screws that's one two three and four once the four screws are open, pull the screws out. So they should actually come out because they are fairly long. They shouldn't really be tight. So yep. Okay. It's one that one out. 
So the two, three, four. And once the four screws are out, shift this over here. Now we have two retaining clips that are holding onto this. One over here, one over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to now, hold on, let me just focus on this a little bit more. So you guys can see, yeah. We've got two retaining clips, one here, one there. Just put your finger in and snap it out so that that retaining clips will come off and the other one's same there we go once these two clips are off we can put them back again once we um this is what they look like there they are uh, so you can see yeah we can put them back on again so once these clips are off we just lift the front and there it goes out so now the main module is out in our hand right now once this is out the issue is actually on this board here this is the display so you can if you just want to get to it you can just pull this cable with the finger like that that comes off there's a clip here that's holding it press the clip and that will just and the display board is out completely this is the culprit right now it's not the chip behind there it's nothing here it's actually this LCD now this particular one as I said I've actually it doesn't work so there's two soldiers at the back one two now these two solders are for the LED lights at the top that lights up green when it turns on. If these are not in, it wouldn't light up. It would just show the display, but there would be no green light on it. So desolder those two joints. Once you desolder those, there's a clip here, which is actually the display, the display ribbon. You pull this ribbon gently. That You can see that's now disconnected. Once that's disconnected, we've got some four clips here, plastic. So you can just push them in like that. Like that. There we go. I've already just desoldered those so there's nothing there. And we just pull it out and there you go. Now I already replaced the capacitors, made no difference. Then I had to use another system to actually find out what's going on. So this is the actual display that is faulty. So you, there's a there is a part number at the back. I tried to look at all the connections and connectors and everything but didn't make any difference at all. If anybody knows how to get hold of this display, then obviously that's a fix to a problem. But apart from that, there's absolutely no point of even looking at this because this is the main culprit. So either it'll fade away, it'll come and then it'll disappear and do various things and then eventually it'll just die. And this is the display that actually goes. I really wish that if somebody knew um, where to get these from because usually a lot of the parts bows make are from different manufacturers and they put tool together by bows themselves as well. So um, yeah, I'm hoping that uh, obviously the, the boards, the PCB boards are made by bows, but the components, not they're not all by bows, they're actually made by different manufacturers. It's just a matter of finding them because the, uh, the lasers are made by, for example, Sanyo and the microchips are made by some Texas Instruments or whatever, um, and then capacitors are made by other companies as well so anyway so yeah this is the actual display that's gone and the one that works is, is in the other one so I can demonstrate that as well but uh, just give me a minute and I will show you how it works right. so I've taken the top off the second one that I had so that one's pretty much um, uh, removed um, I did forget to mention actually the uh, the screws we're removing are not only four actually five there's one for the antenna as well so that screw actually sits right up here underneath there so there's another screw there so it's got one two three and the fourth one is the antenna one that need to remove that as well so once those all five screws have been removed you can put this back in so i can then demo how it actually works so let's put the power back in and see what to expect so you can see that display is now lit up and it's saying please wait i think if we can zoom in maybe as you can see the camera can capture it yep so that's shown up and now if i turn it on there you go so cd door open and i can even put on fm see that so now it's all working you can see the display now working now this is the actual display that works now the thing is that the issue is with this display uh, i'm can't i'm not going to remove this at the moment because i've done all the tests so i can actually show you and effectively basically if you want to replace this you just 
it's um, powered off. It's better to power it off, otherwise it's just power. So if we remove this, push the clip down, pop the board out. Here we go. The board comes out. We can remove this. Right. Pop the other one in, which is a faulty one, of course. The display. Securely fasten it back in and leave it as it is and plug it back in and see what happens next. There we go, that's plugged in. No display, it's dead. Now we can power it on, which I know, please wait, will come up for a few seconds. Power it back on, put it on FM. There you go, now it's working. So those buttons are working. Everything else will work. Scanning. Yeah, so basically what we're saying here is that the actual display is the issue. There's no nothing else that would that needs to be done. So you can see the connectors plugged in and everything else. So there's no basically sign of life in this display, it's completely gone. If I was to replace this display with the other one, everything will start working. So basically, the display is a problem, nothing else. So um, there's no other capacitors or no nothing else. Then no point even checking voltages and stuff because it's just pointless because we know the display is gone. So yep, let's put the other one back on and see what happens. So let's power it back off. And take the power out. Yep. Power comes off, display comes out, put the old one back in, same unit, I'm not stopping the video so it's just pointless. Right, put the display back on, uh, push the clip back in, into its place, display goes back in exactly as it should be, plug the power back in, and there it goes. There we go, and the display is back to life again. There we are. Please wait. And it will start working in minute once I start to plug it in. It goes off, comes back on, and we can do the same thing that we're scanning. I think we've got the... See that? Everything is working perfectly well. We've got the channel... It's this one here. Yeah. So yeah, the, so the issue here is that basically the radio, everything is fine, the only display goes and in order to replace the display we need to find another one from a donor machine which is probably broken or something and we can replace it and that would be you know, an easy repair. Yeah. Bose will replace it for you, they're obviously they charge a service charge and whatnot, but if you can buy something cheaper than a service charge then you've got yourself another unit fully working. Apart from that, is there anything else I can help you with? Please do comment. Other than that, thank you for watching. Bye for now.